copy too. And he probably still has the original. So I'm not like I say it's 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 nasty. Uh, we've kind of like since seen how hip hop has shown its true colors. We can get into what happened with Joe Budden. Uh, Joe Budden situation I think was pretty interesting. He deleted part of his episode. So where he talked about Diddy. Initially, when all of this, <clears throat> when the first like Cassie came out, what did what did he say about it? He didn't say anything about it, right? Like when the um the lawsuit deleted, came out, he deleted that part of that episode too. Okay, Diddy is no longer affiliated with Revolt. Yeah, he uh sold his stake in it. Is Joe Budden podcast still affili- affiliated with Revolt? Uh, so in the space that I was in, where Joe talked about this, and I actually talked to Joe. Uh, about some of just my concerns with what was going on. Uh, he said he wasn't with Revolt anymore, and he said that he would never stand with, for anything against like this. Okay, like, so... I never stand for Joe anything Joe Budden like this. has no, like, business reasons to... Protect Diddy at this time. So this just his mans. I mean... Because we both, we both beat bitches. We, <laughs> okay, so that's what I wanted to kind of get into. Allegedly. So that's kind of what I wanted to get into with what you were saying. So do do you think that Joe, somebody who's had allegations, because this has spurred, again, like we said, when one woman talks about this, a whole bunch of women start to come out and talk about their situation. Uh, not only has Rocky came out, uh, Tahiri, Tahiri. Tahiri came out again. And has been speaking about this. She's been very adamant, you know, about the abuse she, she suffered. Yeah. Jo- Joe's response was sick. Do, should we read that? Yeah, we can. I, I, I did want to read it. Um. Really quick, though, I don't the the. Joe had allegations. Diddy has a video of him like literally whooping a woman's ass. So I don't know why Joe would feel it necessary to go out of his way to um, defend Diddy because y'all aren't in the same box. At well, all. Well, we don't have a video of you beating Tahiri up. I so you, you you got it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can, What you doing, Tahiri's or his? I was going to read both of them. Okay. Do you know? <laughs> so um, Tahiri said, this whole shit took me out so hard to watch. So sorry for Cassie and every other woman who is currently going through it or has ever gone through it. It's tough. And then she said, fuck out of here. Who? The irony. This is so triggering. I remember Joey throwing me down a flight of stairs, dragging me back into the house and me having to talk to him into letting me go. So um, before I read Joe's response, <clears throat> you remember what that lady said about Van? Van Lathan? Yes. And mm-hmm. how he, like, told Diddy where Cassie was. That was Rocky. And told Joe where Rocky was hiding. No, from. Sin. S- sin. Or was it Tahiri? No, it was Sin. Yeah, and t- so... Joe has allegations of, like, being abusive to more than just Tahiri. Oh, no. Well, before you read that, what Joe said, Rocky had posted a list of names on her story. Uh, when, of uh, she women. posted. She, yeah. She named Tahiri, Sin, Kaylin, Yaris, Shireen, uh, Audelier. I think that's how you say that. Esther, and then et cetera. Audria? Is that it? Is Aud- Audely? Audely? Yeah, I think Audely. But, yeah. So, she... That was about six, seven names. And then she put et cetera, saying that there's more people. So you want me to read Joe or are you going to read it? Are you going to read it all dramatic like like you always do? Yeah. I was I'm going to read it. I was going to read it like I had a, just smoked a whole box of Newports. No, I'm, I'm, I'll read it. Salute. <laughs> <laughs> you are a lying, failed gold digger that has abused, targeted, and manipulated many men. Outside of me... You lack an identity, which is why you tried desperately to attach yourself to me over and over for 15 years. The last time I saw you, you, I purchased a mattress from you, and you were happy you made the sale, Petty. Uh, <laughs> you were fine then. This nigga shady as hell. Um, there was a night after Starlet six years ago where you invited me inside your new place. You were fine then, too. You were on my body your entire last stint on Love and Hip Hop and tried your best to disrespect my son's mother in the process, Sin. I had to ask producers to keep you away from us like the cancer you are. 
Yet you continue to slight my name online because it's your identity. I don't speak to you or about you because it's low vibrational. Bitch shit. Um, <laughs> that was a, good therapy shit right there. <laughs> you're a low level Dykeman con woman that has been lying about, you already know, in parentheses, for ages. I pray you heal and move on one day. Hopefully, this is our last exchange. Prayers to all the real victims. To all real victims. Mm. So, this is what I kind of wanted to get into. The six women on the list. Where do you think, in regards to having discussions on domestic violence, being critical of other men, because it's not just Joe. We got Charlemagne, who's had his allegations. Uh, The list just goes on. Like It almost seems like you can't be a part of the industry without putting your hands or, or hurting a woman. So, I mean, where do you feel at where men who have these allegations talk and try to criticize men who now have public evidence about being a uh, domestic violence abuser? What do you think that? Do you think Joe should have not even said nothing? Do you think it's not his place to say anything? Or what, 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 do, you, what do you think? Well, I feel like it would have been weird if he didn't say anything at all because you're like a uh, figurehead in hip-hop, and hip-hop media. So, you Loki, you're, you have to say something. I think maybe let let Mel do it. <laughs> That's what you pay her for. Yeah, like you have you have people on this platform who don't have those type of allegations, and you have people on your platform who are articulate and they 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 say things well. I think um, Ish and Mel taking that and them being the um, like ahead the forerunners of that conversation probably would have been the best. And then Joe could have just been there and been like, yup. Mm-hmm. And then let's move on. Like, don't, let's not focus on me. No, let's have the, say something. let's have, well, yeah, I agree with what my co host there. Like, I, I agree with their sentiments. This is crazy. This is nasty. It was hard to watch. And then that's it. Move on. No, nah, Joe got to do more than that. Joe cried when De La Soul didn't get they splits. Joe is hip hop. What? Joe, you know you know who De La Soul is? Yes, I duh. Okay, but they, he they cried get, on camera. Yeah, when they didn't get their splits for you know for their records, he that's, did. That's hip hop. He is hip hop. Joe is hip hop. He is required to when we see something fundamentally uh, corrupting hip hop like this, he has to speak up. It's and lo- that's, it's kind of like the pot calling the kettle black though. But in 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 this way, he is the reflection of hip hop. He is a voice of, of hip hop. It, the problem I have with Joe when it comes to this episode is the fact that he did not stop everything and go straight Restart. to, hey, we got to start the show from the top. Yeah. And because you didn't do that, because you didn't see the ser- and seriousness to do that at the time, is why I'm looking at you questionable and I'm skeptical of, of the things that you're saying in regards to if you want to protect Diddy and things like that. I don't we know what together, you said on it. We were together that day, and when Rhetoric saw the video come out, he was like, Joe is recording right now, and he's probably going to start everything over. Like, that's what you expected, or that's what you thought that he would do being the podcaster that he is. Fuck all the hip-hop, this and that. The podcaster that he is, you thought that he was just going to start over and be like, this is what's happening today, this is what we need to talk about, but that's not what he did. And I think that is because he has those same allegations. So he's treating Diddy like he has a soft spot for this shit because you've been through the same shit. I accused him of throwing softballs at Diddy. And he then, definitely has. And then, if it was anybody else, like if it was like fucking like Drake on this video whooping a girl's ass, Joe would have ran the whole shit back. Yeah. He would nah. He would have been going through lyrics. Change your outfits. Go home. Come back. This is a fresh new come back today. Because <laughs> we got to get into this. Yeah. We got to figure it out. And that's where but it was his man's. And you're right. And that's where I feel like that was just the problem with this. Because at the same token, man, like. If your man's is whooping a woman's ass, like if one of your close friends you find out is like beating his girl up. You got to say something. You have to be a voice of that. But my thing is this. When it comes to having men who have been victim, not victim, have been accused or have done domestic violence, I think in a way it is kind of up to them to speak out on it because they have to, one, show rehabilitation is a real thing. They have to be able to be an example of that. And in the same token, when you go to an AA meeting, I know a lot of people probably haven't, but when you go to an AA meeting, it's not ran by people who've never had addictions. They're ran by people, but former addicts. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who, if you really should be looking for them to be guiding you, would be someone who has had that affliction or that problem in the past. 
So that's why I feel like, really, Joe, you should be the main one being a voice of that and being av- an advocate for I women agree. in that regard. I ag- completely agree. I don't think Joe is emotionally like developed enough to do that. I don't think Joe is willing to be that vulnerable with his fan base admitting something. First of all, he would have to own up to the fact that he did this shit in the yeah, first place. Because he's always called it a lie. Yeah, he's never done that. So if you don't take accountability for your actions, you can't like give people advice from a place of, oh, I've been here before. Like one woman, two women, I can see seven getting that off. But once you get to five and more, like, okay, dog. Come what, on. Like you're so, you're something about your behavior is a little off. You're beating bitches up. Allegedly, but that's that's we can't go with that. But there's something about your behavior that is giving off It's alarming. That Yes, that's alarming. Like there, there are women who felt like they had to hide from you. Yeah, that's not okay. And I mean, no matter how much a, a nigga has annoyed me in my life, I've never felt like I had to hide from a man for fear of anything, physical or emotional harm, of any sort. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's 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 rough. It's rough. That's not normal. It's not. It's not. But we still. Joe would have really had to come in there and been like, "Yo." I have lost my temper in the heat of the moment before I know. Like, he would have really had to have a, like, honest conversation with men from a a place of vulnerability and honesty. And I will never, ever, ever, ever see Joe doing that. I could never see him doing that. I mean, and and I'll I'll say this and we can close this portion of the conversation off this. When someone alleges you sat on their stomach and then you say I saw I sat above their breast. Like it, it shows what kind of mindset you on <laughs> really quickly, though, because that that reminds me that I wanted to play something I found. So um, Esther back Esther Baxter um, is uh, Joe's ex and one of them, one of them. She's one of the ones on the list, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Um, Talk to me about. I'm going to play this for you guys. You know, heard that he, I heard that he's talking about the fact that he killed our daughter on this song. I can't believe that it happened. I lost my unborn daughter when we fought. I'm thinking I killed Aspen. And that's when I thought that we'd be dead a while. Yeah. And so I felt like it was um, my responsibility to, to let everybody know what actually happened, the truth. Of, of what happened. I didn't cheat on him. We weren't together. Uh, we aren't together now. Uh, we broke up that night that he decided that he was going to take an argument and make it physical. And we lost our daughter because of that. Do you feel like he's doing it for some type of uh, personal gain? Or? I don't, you know, I, I have no idea. So, um, yeah, that's Joe Budden's ex, and she talks about uh, they, they got in a fight, and she was pregnant, and she miscarried as a result of the, the assault. So, And then he rapped about it. Yeah, that was nuts. I didn't know that bar was, a, was what he meant when he said that. I thought he was talking about something else, but damn, like that yeah. was nuts. I, and I feel, I didn't want to stay too much longer, but I feel conflicted like when I do listen to him in a way because I feel like am I – assisting someone who's done something wrong and is he truly apologetic i i be wanting to believe he is i be one i think that i probably convince myself and tell myself he is apologetic of it but then when you like said say, we we talked about the shit that happened with the the girl the bad was good mom bad decisions podcast recently and it's he just, just like makes bad decisions it, it makes it hard just to say you're a joe budden like supporter <laughs> it does young 